In this lesson, FMS Programming 101, we are going to learn how to program the Flight Management System, or FMS, of the Citation 10 2.0. At the end of the lesson, you will have learned the basic steps to perform in order to prepare the FMS for takeoff. The FMS has keys called Line Select Keys on either side of the screen. They are identified by the position relative to the top of the screen and whether they are on the left or right side. For example, one left or one right. From now on, I will refer to the keys using this terminology. The area at the bottom of the screen is called the scratch pad. In the scratch pad, you can type information using the keys on, on the FMS, or you can copy existing data into the scratch pad by pressing the adjacent line select key. Below the scratch pad are seven buttons. They are as follows. Perf for performance, Nav for navigation, Preve and Next for forward and backward movement through the FMS pages, FPL for flight plan, Prog for progress, and DIR for direct. When the aircraft and avionics are first powered, the FMS will default to the Nav Ident page. This page displays the current date and time, along with the dates of current and expired databases. The expired database can be reloaded by pressing line select key to right as long as the database still exists. The FMS needs to know the current location of the aircraft, and this is our first step. Press line select key for right. This will take us to the position init page. On this page, there are three positions to choose from. We want to choose the most accurate, which is the GPS-1. First, we want to verify that the GPS-1 position is accurate. Compare the GPS-1 position to the last position at the top and the reference waypoint below it. They won't be exact, but they should be close. If you are satisfied that the GPS-1 position is correct, press line select key 3 right to load the position into the FMS. This procedure can be performed on either FMS unit, and the last position entered will be the one used. You should now see the word loaded. This completes loading the initial position, and now we need to enter a flight plan. Go to the active flight plan page by pressing line select key for right. The flight plan can be entered manually or by selecting a stored flight plan from the stored flight plan list. To enter flight plan manually, begin by entering the destination airport identifier at line select key to right. Continue by entering the waypoints at line select key 2 left, 3 left, etc. until you are finished entering waypoints. Now you must close the flight plan by typing the airport identifier into the scratch pad or by pressing the line select key adjacent to the airport identifier to copy the airport ID to the scratch pad and placing it at the opposite line select key. To enter a stored flight plan, press line select key for left to go to the flight plan list page. Now place the desired flight plan in the scratch pad by pressing the appropriate line select key. Press line select key for right to move to the flight plan select page. Place the scratch pad data at line select key one left and then press line select key one right to activate the flight plan. The FMS will automatically cycle to the active flight plan page. The flight plan is now entered but we still need to complete the performance initialization. This step gives the FMS the data it needs to calculate climb, cruise, and descent performance. Press line select key for right. Performance initialization consists of five pages, as indicated in the upper right hand corner of the FMS screen. Today, we will only be concerned with pages four and five. Press the Next button on the FMS until page 4 of 5 is displayed. Adjacent to line select key 2 left is our initial cruise altitude. By default, optimum is displayed. We can leave the selection as optimum, or we can select a new cruise altitude. To select a new cruise altitude, 
type the altitude into the scratch pad and press line select key to left. Press next to proceed to page 5. Here we must enter the fuel on board. The amount on board is already displayed under the word gauge surrounded by parentheses. If you are going to add more fuel, the future total can be entered instead. Type the amount into the scratch pad and press line select key to left, followed by for right to confirm the performance initialization. This completes the performance initialization process. The perf data page is automatically selected. If you left the cruise altitude at optimum, you can see what the optimum cruise altitude is at the top of this page under the abbreviation CRZ. Press the flight plan button to return to the active flight plan page. If altitude restrictions exist on your planned route of flight, such as those associated with standard instrument arrival procedures, you can enter them now on the right side of the FMS screen. The FMS will then calculate the necessary data to fly a descent to meet these altitude restrictions. The format for entering these restrictions is as follows. If the altitude is a flight level, enter the letters FL before the three-digit altitude. If the altitude is not a flight level, enter the entire altitude. If you must be at or above an altitude when reaching a waypoint, enter the altitude followed by the letter A. If you must be at or below an altitude when reaching a waypoint, enter the altitude followed by the letter B. If you must be at an altitude when reaching a waypoint, just enter the altitude. This completes the FMS Programming 101 tutorial. The information covered in this lesson is the minimum necessary to prepare the aircraft for flight. There is still a great deal more to discover about the Citation 10 flight management system, and this will be covered in later lessons. Thanks for watching.